Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today we've got space weather as the solar storm marches on. We've got seismic activity and top science news in the electromagnetic realm, both biology and atmospheric dynamics. But we're starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star, and we find that solar flares continue firing in the M-class range. We didn't get any significant eruptions in Earth's direction, but there are plasma releases at the limbs, including regions turning in to face the Earth. The big story right now is solar storm with potential for more. The sunspots have significant complexity, especially at the large grouping there. We're watching for flares and for more sunspots incoming from the limb over at the left side. In addition to the flaring and the watch for more, the solar wind is blowing hard. As solar wind speed ramps up for this coronal hole stream impact, it tells us that the impact we took the previous two days was the co-rotating interaction region the sun's current sheet impact, and that makes the peak solar storm condition and lasting unrest an even bigger wide-eye event. Folks, in years past, these little solar wind events would never do this. Earth's magnetic field is really stumbling. Up next, 6.9 struck shallow in the Philippines yesterday. Dozens are reported dead. Buildings have come down. The ground is cracked and various infrastructures are offline or broken. Pretty brutal way to end the month of September there. Hopefully the death toll doesn't go much higher today. Up first in the articles, folks, they have blasted microbes with light radiation and then removed the magnetic field during their recovery, practically turned them into super microbes. It's worth noting that we are due to have a major solar flash of light radiation here on Earth when our magnetic field is bottoming out. You can connect those dots on your own. Lastly today, folks, good paper here looking at the fine details of electron precipitation that destroys ozone during geomagnetic storm conditions. It's well known in terms of the connection, but here they were tracking the energy levels at various positions relative to the sun, relative to time of day, found extreme surges from the midnight to dusk sector. Folks, the special issue of Observer Review this month is about to come out. We're covering the impact of space weather on atmospheric electricity and technology. We are two weeks away from the monthly issue release, and when you sign up at the link below, you instantly get access to nearly three years of detailed coverage of the top science. It is the only publication on Earth actively tracking the Earth's pole shift and magnetic disaster cycle. Folks, this coming weekend, the major prepper events begin at Observer Ranch. World class, bridging the gap, focus on high elevation survival with world experts. The next weekend is the Colorado Prepper Expo. I am speaking at 1 p.m. Saturday, and I hope you guys make it out to the ranch, which is just a short drive away from the event center. The experience the next weekend after that is the personal deep dive into a demigod level of toughness in mental and spirituality. The drive, the fearless persistence, the reliability 365 days a year that you find here at the channel. Wouldn't you like that in your life as you prepare for the disaster? Go to the special link below, watch the introduction video, and see if the event is for you. Next one, looking like it's going to be in February. Then November, we keep going. I'm told our combat team likes to call this self-offense, not self-defense. Observer speed dating is looking like it'll be another good one November 7th and 8th. Documentary premiere event the 15th and the last pole shift conference day of the year on the 16th. We hope to see you out there. ObserverRanch.com. Special link below if you want to come to the experience. And we greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 5 30 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone